What's up everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel, I'm your host. And on this episode, we're gonna touch back on the topic of why loan officers are having a difficult time in today's market. Today's market, you know, for those of you maybe watching this at a different time, at this state, we are literally, you know, working our hardest just to continuously originate loans and originate deals. But because of the market change, it's created a substantial challenge. If you remember, you know, from the previous video, we are going from an interest rate market where you're in the twos and now you're in the sixes or possibly the high fives, right? It could potentially even go higher after this video. But nonetheless, even in the pandemic, when we we're in the twos, we actually had such good pricing where we were able to give lender credit so we could pay for lender fees or possibly pay for the all the closing costs altogether. Whereas today, just you know, even at five and a half or in the 6% range, that's with points. So now you have to charge fees. And on top of that, you also have to get points. And so that's the challenge that we're experiencing right now. You know, if you are originating loans and you're going through it, I can relate with you because I personally am also a loan originator, right? You know, I manage a sales team, but I still produce. And so I have a direct relationship in terms of my point of view, whereas most managers, they don't actually originate loans anymore. They more or less kind of go off metrics and just kind of tell you what to do and they manage your performance. I myself do, does the same exact thing. The only difference is I'm in the trenches with you. And so going back to the topic, one of the reasons I believe loan officers are having a difficult time right now is simply the leads. Now I know every company ranges, it also depends on what kind of loan officer you are. And so some of you watching this, you might be like what I call an outside loan agent, meaning that you really rely on partnerships. So you're looking for referral partners, whether it be you know realtors, accountants, escrow agents, right attorneys whatever it is you actually have to self-generate your leads and your business and then on the flip side you may be working for a broker so you could be remote at home and you probably have to pay out of pocket for the certain leads that you know that you get and those those leads cost anywhere from you know now in this market they're probably more expensive but you know the lead type in itself typically are internet generated and so when you get that lead, so does seven, eight other lenders. And so now you're competing with them. Of course, as a broker working in wholesale, you have a distinct advantage because you're not having to mark up so much. So you're getting a really low interest rate. So that probably helps eliminate half of your competition that's calling on that same lead. Another type of loan officer is an in-house loan officer. So this is a consumer direct type model. In other words, a call center. And so you're probably being delivered leads, right? And it all comes down to your company, your platform, if you're a call center agent. Some call centers as of today are really struggling in regards to delivering leads. And so, you know, depending on their budget, depending on their marketing savviness, they may just be delivering you internet inquiries or possibly trigger leads. But at the end of the day, what I think the challenge is, is us understanding the lead type that we're actually dealing with. And so, you know, there are various lead type, aggregate leads, which are basically internet pop up. So they may have opted in, but didn't mean to. You ever run into that? So you call somebody or you get connected to somebody and they're like, oh man, that was quick. Or wow, my phone's blowing up. I didn't mean to get these calls. Or simply, you know, you're getting transferred leads through maybe a telemarketer or a customer service agent who actually is outbounding for you. And then once they get a, a sign of interest, then they transfer it to you, right? So that's a lead type. In any demographic or any platform, you know, oh, also there's mailers. So your company could be mailing some copy and people are calling in. And in my opinion, there's tiers to leads, right? So let's talk about conversion. So first off, I believe the highest converting lead is what's called a portfolio lead. A portfolio lead is if you work for a lender who has a portfolio, meaning that they are direct lender, they service their loans, you know, you actually have that history or that relationship with them already. I believe that's the highest converting type lead. Second to that, in my opinion, is mailers. 
because if you have somebody calling in from a mailer, they're not applying like online. So that's probably very exclusive, right? It, it's someone who didn't hit submit and their information went to 10 or 15 different companies. And so you're not necessarily competing, but your copy, which is the marketing advertisement, has to really be dialed in. You know, there's some companies that are marketing rates that clearly are not available unless you go on like a 10 year fix or an adjustable rate mortgage. And so that could really deflate the loan officer because they're calling in saying, yeah, I'm calling in about 3% or this 2.99. And emotionally as an originator, we can tend to get fatigued and frustrated based on that because we know that there's no way this person can get a 30 year fix at 3%, even probably an arm, which is an adjustable rate mortgage. There's you know two faces or two sides to this. Number one, it's our own perception and then number two, it's understanding your audience, knowing how to read the room is what I'm saying. So in other words, if I'm talking to an aggregate lead, which is like a lower my bills or some sort of internet type of opt-in, I know that I cannot approach that person the same way that I would approach a cold call lead that was transferred to me through a telemarketer because it's completely different, right? So they inquired the person online Whereas the customer service live transfer from an outbound call was not expecting anything, right? They weren't in any need. We contacted them and psychologically, you know, the person who is receiving the initial contact, they're actually a little bit more in power, right? So like when you call somebody, the other person has something you want. When someone calls you, you have power because you have something that they want. Anyway, outside of mailers, then in my personal opinion comes trigger leads. Trigger leads are basically someone who did a credit inquiry for a mortgage loan application. And the reason why those are just about as solid as like a mailer or portfolio lead is because those people are already in motion. There's an interest, there's a need, so much so that a lender pulled their credit but it all depends on how you approach them. So if you don't know how to approach them, you wanna make sure that you absorb, you know, some of the content that I have. More than likely, you're probably catching this video on YouTube. Did you know that the YouTube search bar is just like Google, right? And so if you're dealing with trigger leads and you wanna know my content on that specific topic, go to the search bar and just put in the topic and then sales remastered. More than likely, I have a video that talks about that. So before you do that, don't leave. <laughs> I got some very helpful information that's really gonna help you out. Because right now, with the current market state, there are a few things that we need to understand. Number one is we're not in a rate term market. That was the pandemic. The pandemic was the rate and term market. Rate and term basically means that you're just lowering your rate and interest rate. You're not getting cash out, right? So you're just lowering your interest rate and payment. That's a rate and term refinance or transaction. This market that we're in is a cash out market because the rates are up, but so is consumer spending, so is consumer debt. And so a lot of people are leveraging credit or debt in order to sustain their living, in order to make ends meet. And so we are in a position where this is now a cash out market because many homeowners have a ton of equity and we can technically use that advantage to deliver some sort of benefit, regardless of the rate increase or the amount of fees. It's just a matter of understanding that we are no longer in a rate and term market. So what that means is of the two types of leads or two loan types, I should say. So you have government, which is one loan type and government is your FHA, your VA loan. And then you have the second, which is conventional, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. So Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, I would say in my opinion, is probably representing less than 10% of my current monthly business. And the reason for that is because, you know, even though you may pay off debt, even though you may be able to provide some sort of savings, you have more resistance on that versus a government loan type. And here's the reason why, is because whether you have a VA loan or an FHA loan, you have a unique ability to do what's called a streamline. So VA, the streamline benefit is called EARL, which is acronym, stands for interest rate reduction loan. FHA, same thing, it's called streamline. It's a streamline refinance. And so that is in your back pocket and that serves value because those particular transactions 
they're not cash out, they're simply designed to lower the rate in payment. That's all it can do. As a matter of fact, you have to lower it by at least half a point. You know, on your VAs, you not only have to do that, but you have to also recoup the cost of the transaction within a specific amount of time. And so anyone who has a VA or FHA loan always will have access to that. And the reason why it's important for you to know that is because when we sell them on a cash out government transaction, we need to plant seeds about that streamline in order for them to help understand and accept the interest rate. Because most homeowners, they believe that, you know, when they go into a new refinance, that the term that they're gonna get, they're just gonna have it forever. And it's weird because the average, you know, turn time of people refinancing is usually about 18 months to two years. Very rarely you come across someone who's had the same loan for like two or three years or more, especially because of the pandemic. So a lot of the traffic that we're running into, they already refinance within the last two years because of the pandemic. So with that in mind, what we need to know is that government loans is really going to be something that you want to heavily focus on. If you're hunting through like title data or you're as a broker, you're buying leads, I would probably not necessarily reference conventional loans. I would look at like VA, which is pretty cool. It's unique. You can go up to 100% of the property value. There's no loan limit. So you can literally do a VA loan for like 1.6 million. Whereas like FHA, they have loan limits, right? And the loan to value on a cash out with FHA is usually about 80, you know, it's 80%. VA can go up to 100% so long as you meet a specific criteria. So I want you to keep that in mind. So with that said, what I personally would do if I were hunting for leads or buying leads or I, you know, worked for a portfolio lender and I have access to previously funded loans, most in particular, maybe loan officers who no longer work for that company anymore, I would try to find a way to access those leads. My focus 100% would be on those two loan types. But not only that, what you're looking at are a few factors. So it's gonna depend on whether or not you already have that loan with you because you're a portfolio lender, or if you're ordering like leads through a vendor as a broker, or if you're hunting on title data because you maybe you have a relationship with a title person. So what you wanna pay attention to are these columns. Number one is you wanna pay attention to the last time they did the transaction. And you wanna keep that within, you know, typically two, three years from the date that they originated their last loan. And you might be thinking like, well, why do I want to call people at 2%, 3%? The reason is you're going to get more data that way. So people who qualified literally two years ago, more than likely can qualify today. So not only that, but you know, the origination date, but you want to pay attention to also the FICO score. So the FICO score, you know, I wouldn't necessarily look for homeowners who are north of 760 or 740. Why? is because typically if you have that credit score, you're doing pretty well. Like you're managing your expenses pretty well. Like are there people with 760 or 800 FICOs who have debt? Yeah, but not as much as someone who has a 660 FICO or 680 FICO. And so it's important to really pay attention to that because you're looking for an audience or an avatar, like a lead type that's gonna give you most traction that will be worthy of your time, right? So in my opinion, you know, depending on the, on your lender, like mine, for example, I can go down to 580. You might be different. You might need 620, depending on who you work with and where you work at. So if I were looking for leads, I would literally look for, you know, FICOs that were between 580 and under 700. Now, here's the reason why, not only because they're more likely to have debt, but because I can also add in the leverage of helping them re build their FICO score through the transaction. So this, that is massively helpful because again, you're building on the bigger picture. And again, with the streamline that we talked about them having in their back pocket, it's kind of like a two-step process. So you're actually getting two deals from just one. So you're getting the transaction now to pay off their debt, help improve their FICO, help improve their cash flow. And then in six months, as long as they made their payments on time, they behave themselves, they're still employed or what have you, they don't rack up their debt again. In six months, they can utilize that streamlined benefit program that they have as a government loan member. You're looking at the FICO score, 
but you're also looking at like equity position, right? So it, two years ago, you know, when they financed their last transaction, what kind of loan was it? Like, was it a streamlined refinance? And if it was, streamlines don't need appraisals. So you could just make up the value so long as it fits the criteria because there's no appraisal being done. But if it was like, let's say a rate and term refinance, right? And FHA, let's say, you know, you had a purchase loan and they finance 97.5%. You have to do a little bit of research to figure out because a lot of people were doing DPAs. DPAs is down payment assistance, which basically means they brought nothing down. <laughs> the only thing they paid for was closing costs. They have a secondary lien. I'll go into that maybe in another video, but you want to pay attention to their equity position in the property at the time they originated their loan because it could give you an idea of how much in equity you have. So if I had an FHA purchase loan in you know two years ago that financed that 97.5%, chances are I probably can't sell them on a cash out refinance. They may have increased in equity, but sure, they probably now have 20% equity. Well, FHA's cash out limit is 80%. What are you gonna give them, <laughs> right? So again, I'm paying attention to that. Another point is you wanna look at the demographics. You wanna look at you know certain states that have been really, really blowing up. Cost of living, of course, plays a factor. So, you know, California, where I reside, the cost of living here is stupid crazy. The taxes that are being charged out here in California, it's ridiculous compared to other states, right? So you wanna take in consideration of that because it doesn't cost the same to live in California as it does to live in Texas. Same thing with it doesn't cost the same to live in New York as it does to you know live in California. New York is very expensive, but so is their median income score. So these are factors that you wanna really understand because being proactive is gonna keep you fed with the right lead type so you're spending your time working with people or originating through a list that is actually going to give you return as opposed to just blind dialing right now is a point to get creative and you have to go and find that business whether it's looking through past funded loans from your company whether it's getting title data with these specifics or as a broker and you're buying leads at 35 85 100 dollars a piece you want to make sure you're ordering the right criteria in order to have that pay for itself on the next video that I'm going to have, what I'll do is I'll cover another topic as to why loan officers are not thriving right now. I believe there are answers out there, there are resources, but unfortunately because of maybe where you're located or who you work with or the management team that you have, they simply are not providing you the answers. They may not even be providing you the resources, but they're providing you a desk <laughs> or internet access. And it goes beyond that. We as individuals do not work for our hourly income. We work for, you know, our commissions and income opportunity. But to weather the storm and make sure that you stay paid and you still thrive, it's these little nuances that is going to help you get over this market shift. And it will pass. There will be a time where the market rate dips. And if you can learn how to be efficient and be market proof with the lessons that I'm teaching you here, you're going to absolutely dominate when that time comes. But more importantly, if it happens again, you'll know exactly how to pivot and stay relevant. So if this is your first time catching a video from Sales Remastered, thank you for your time. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me with the algorithm and make sure you hit the like, the thumbs up and comment below. Let me know what your feedback is. Did it make sense? Do you have any questions that I can answer? And also for those of you who've been following and supporting my channel, I ask that you do take the time to please, in return of all the information I give you, all I ask is that you share, like, and comment. That's it. And uh, in exchange, I'll give you some information to uh, keep you sane, keep you paid. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one. Bye.